Hi everyone and welcome to another amazing webinar on Omnichannel Case Routing. My name is Rahman Mukaram and I'm a Customer Success Manager here at XGrid. And I'm excited to be joined with Ahmed Zishir. Ahmed, if you can please go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, thank you, Rahman. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ahmed Zishir and I work as a Senior Salesforce Administrator for XGrid and I help their clients improve their business through the intelligent use of Salesforce technology. Thanks a lot, Ahmed, for your time today. So let's get started with a very basic question, if I may ask. What is a support process and why do we even need it? Uh, so the support process is basically a set of important steps that uh, your team can follow to complete a support cycle. Uh, in other words, it's the process of solving customer challenges and pain points uh, immediately and effectively uh, via phone, email, live chat or tickets. So. Uh, customers always initiate uh, customer support interactions as they are the ones that tell you that they're facing a problem. So the most significant reason to invest in your customer support teams is basically to, you can say, delight your customers. So doing this is critical to your business's uh, long-term success. And uh, when you delight your customers, they're more likely to be loyal uh, and long-term and that advocates for you and drawing new business. So support process also helps organization to execute their uh, core processes effectively and efficiently, uh, such as delivering mandated products or services. Uh, so what your core processes are, uh, they are basically end-to-end cross-functional processes that directly deliver value to external clients or intermediaries. Right. So if I may ask you, what are the characteristics of an ideal support process? So starting off with the important characteristics of an ideal support process, uh, great customer service starts with the respect for customers. So during each and every customer interaction, it is important to remember that each customer is a person and not a ticket. And to treat them accordingly, uh, simple ways to do this include uh, using the customer's name, thanking them for the patience and keeping your emotions in check, even if the customer starts to get worked up. Uh, additionally, uh, providing personalized customer service through an omnichannel approach shows that uh, you respect your customer's energy and time and attention. And if your customers find contacting you to be too laborious or time consuming, uh, you won't uh, be off to a great start. Uh, instead, uh, make it easy as possible for them to reach out uh, when they have issues and concerns. Active and effective listening is one of the most important qualities needed for customer service. Uh, it requires deep and insightful understanding of what the customer is actually saying and what they're not, obviously. So only when you dedicate the time and attention to hearing the customer out, you you can completely begin to work towards a satisfactory resolution. Uh, to offer the most successful customer service, you'll need to practice empathy and emotional intelligence. Uh, being empathetic means that you're putting yourself in your customer's shoes and making an effort to understand the emotions they're experiencing. Uh, good customer service qualities that relate to listening. Uh, it's equally important to have the right approach when it comes to responding. So exceptional customer service skills include speaking clearly and articulately. So providing just the right amount of information and asking the right questions at the right time. Even your choice of words and affirming phrases like can, help or resolve can point the customer interaction towards a more positive conclusion. Uh, deep knowledge of your products and services and the confidence to talk to them in detail are key customer service attributes. So when a customer reaches out uh, with a question, they certainly don't want to end up speaking with someone who is just as clueless as they are. So uh, to thrive in customer service, you should know your product and or services inside and out. And armed with essential information, you can more successfully and expeditedly understand your customers' needs and find the right fixes. Adaptability, flexibility, and you can say an outside the box approach to customer dilemmas are some of the best skills to have for 
successful customer services uh, especially when there's no obvious right answer to the customer's problem and when the customer service agents can confidently come up with uh, creative solutions on their own uh, they won't need to loop in a busy customer service manager for every issue that comes and as a result uh, customers will feel that they're in good hands and sure to appreciate the personalized assistance and providing efficient customer service is more important than ever uh, because it doesn't mean that you should work through customer support inquiries at, as quickly as possible uh rather efficiently uh, that means minimizing the effort and maximizing the results if i was to talk about the steps one needs to take to come up with the support process what would that be the first order of business is to establish the structure of your service delivery uh clearly outlining and defining the different tiers you will use to address issues Not all problems are created equal, and you shouldn't treat them e- equally. Uh, for example, uh, tier one, essentially the help desk, can be accessed in many different ways depending on the organization and its resources. And for the escalation uh, part uh, of tier one, that is tier two. That is for uh, cases that might need to be routed to a functional expert for uh, non-standard process questions. or to a specialist for complex requirements or uh, sensitive legal issues or maybe to an IT specialist for deeper technical issues and tier tier 3 which should uh, comprise of only 10% of your queries should either be an escalation point for the strategic issues related to the business uh, performance or for more uh, technical issues and enhancements requiring uh, code fixes or others or any sort of customizations Now that you have your tiers outlined and a clear scope, it's time to uh, define tools needed for work intake, prioritization, and execution. So, such tools could include Salesforce Knowledge for self service, uh, Salesforce Service Cloud for case management, or uh, omni-channel tools for advanced case handling. So, once you have those established, it is important to make sure that. Uh, you align your entire team around these uh, around this set of tools and making sure that everyone is educated and able to use them so with the structure outlined necessary tools in place now it's time to uh, define the responsibilities of the various tools uh, across the you can say different tiers and begin training them Uh, don't forget to ensure that security is configured appropriately for all the team members based on their uh, defined set of responsibilities. Uh, try uh, pinpointing certain users such as super users and empower them to and empower them with the necessary tools, uh, training, and permissions to help with training, uh, to answer common questions, or to resolve basic issues. So this is uh, this will allow the CEO and support teams to focus on other areas that will uh, add more value to the business. Uh, next, make sure you establish an internal uh, Salesforce knowledge base, which can be uh, used for tier zero or self service as well as uh, for the support team uh, to reference. Uh, doing this preemptively rather than after the fact. Uh, will help deflect many cases that may otherwise have ended up taking uh, taking up uh, more valuable time and resources so uh, uh, a knowledge base can be built in many ways but it's uh, typically created using release notes or documentation from the change management function uh, while the primary purpose of more support process is to make sure users get the answers uh, they need as fast as possible it's also an intake me- mechanism for feature requests uh, or bug fixes and any other enhancements that could add more value to the business so when outlining your support processes make sure you clearly define your process for uh, how service requests turn into feature requests which then follow back to the coe for roadmap evaluation 
occasionally support requests come through because of a legitimate issue with the system uh, these instances need to be prioritized with the delivery team and the necessary fixes <clears throat> should be incorporated with a defined release process so sometimes support requests are enhancements that also need uh, also need to feed back into the delivery process for prioritization and and other stuff now that you've explained us the basics, what were the issues that our client was facing in their support cycle? So <clears throat> the already existing model for uh, routing support cases in Salesforce was done with case assignment rules. And these are simple automation rules that uh, send cases either to a holding queue or to an individual, uh, to individual users based on the case criteria. So in this workflow, however, agents had to manually review queues and pull work items uh, out, of, out for themselves, or supervisors had to manually uh, assign cases from the queues. So support center received uh, high volumes of customer requests from a multitude of sources, such as uh, website forms or incoming emails, customer chats, and phone calls, uh, which were extremely difficult to manage and uh, customer SLAs dictate how quickly uh, we need to respond or resolve the issue uh, but that relies on the request going to the right person uh, who has the right skills to resolve the issue so cases uh, had to be manually assigned to the appropriate rep keeping in mind uh, who had the right skill for it and the availability uh, of the rep um, <clears throat> and the availability of the rep was time consuming and this method was prone to human errors. It was difficult to keep track of the number of requests assigned to each rep due to their large number and complexity of each case. So some cases required more hours and some less. Uh, some reps were fulfilling their uh, the quota of cases that needed to be resolved per day uh, by targeting the low hanging fruits while some were stuck with the bigger more complex cases which reduced the overall number of cases being worked by that particular rep right so how did we solve it uh, coming to the solution uh, what we did was that we introduced omnichannel case routing in our client's salesforce instance so once it activated and set up uh, it's a tool that automatically transmits work to your users in real time and omni channel can be found inside the sales and service console it is made to basically help businesses in improving uh, both their customer service strategy and operations so by creating a single uh, universal queue that contains all pending contacts uh, omni channel routing easily handles this complicated situation so when the request for a call, message, email, or chat comes in, uh, using routing criteria, uh, Omnichannel uh, takes incoming work items and routes them to the most capable available support agents. Uh, it, it sends the case or leads to an agent who is qualified to handle it and has the necessary skills and experience. <clears throat> It appears straightforward enough, but it's a strong tool that can rebuild out of date and ineffective systems. The effectiveness of omnichannel routing lies in its capacity to help enterprises make the most of their uh, agent team's full potential. Additionally, the improved queue management results in lower average wait times, abandoned rates, and handling times. So through the implementation of omnichannel case routing, our client's company's incoming work was routed to the queues based on uh, the case type and details. So uh, supervisors managed their agent, agent's queues, uh, queue assignment and assigned agents only to queues they were trained on. So ensuring the right agent with the right skill gets the case. So this eliminated the manual assignment of cases. Cases were automatically routed when they came into agents with open capacity to handle the case. 
if no agents were available the case the cases waited in the queue and went to the next agent that became available agents logged in to receive work ensuring that they don't get off uh, they don't get work when they're out of the office or on a break so supervisors could easily view who's online and when the cases were assigned appropriately to the available and qualified rep the response time was significantly increased supervisors managed how the cases an agent can handle at a time so cases were automatically routed when they came into the agents with open capacity to handle the case if no agents were available uh, cases waited in the queue and went to the next agent uh, that became available uh, the omni channel uh, supervisor app also allowed team leads and managers to see their agents with uh, assigned workloads plus the cases waiting to be assigned so all in one view instead of navigating through dashboards and reports supervisors or managers could also view the context or every interaction the rep uh, had saved in the form of notes using after call work can you tell us what were the results of these implementations coming to the positive outcomes there there were many positive outcomes of implementing omni channel case routing for our clients so let's look at the main ones with an interaction flow designer and intelligent routing rules uh, based on context intent talents and distribution agents could now direct the customers to the optimal resolution so this maximizes experiences of both our clients customers and the agent and it also enabled efficient client routing to the appropriate agents in appropriate groups uh, contacting customer service via chat became easy as customers were guided through the process with ease and as a result there were greater there was a greater chance that the customer spoke with an agent uh, who can relate to their problem so agents could access every website or in store touch point that clients had visited with the right system and agents had a comprehensive view of the customer's profile and the history of interaction with the client's brand uh, customers could contact our clients representatives across any any channel uh, without having to repeat information from earlier or ongoing interactions there was no chance of losing contacts because agents could simultaneously obtain conversation uh, conversation history across all the channels an integrated offline and online experience provided by the omni channel customer service helped in maintaining a consistent brand voice so brands can create a smooth transition between their online and offline businesses while also uh, enforcing their desired uh, voice and tone across all of their platforms so uh, brands can also use uh, omni channel uh, support software with uh, ai powered intent and sentiment detection to pay extra attention when it's necessary so because of the user friendly interface salesforce admins could quickly implement on the fly modifications into the operations ma- maintaining the flexibility and ability to adjust as required uh, with drag and drop icons almost any routing scenario could be created in a matter of minutes omni channel interaction metrics also offered a thorough examination of what went well and what may have been done even better using a wide wide range of data points and thank you everyone for sticking with us i hope you were able to extract some really useful information on omni channel case routing if you have any questions regarding this please feel free to reach us out at let's talk at xgrid and we will be happy to have a chat with you so that concludes our today's webinar and we'll see you soon in another episode with an exciting topic have a great day ahead goodbye